Welcome CSE 121 to our assignment four. And this assignment will be in many steps. We'll keep building on it as we go because we're gonna use a simple concept like creating a test score. How many points we have, how many earned points, how many possible points, and we'll keep building on it and scaling it so that we can enter more scores so that it's more efficient as we work. So this will be something that we'll keep building on. We'll eventually apply letter grades, things like that. So it's a simple concept that we're gonna build on. So we may have repels that start off as four, test scores A or 4A, 4B, 4C, different parts of it as we go. So, you know, just keep that in mind as you work. So we're going to create a new one first and we'll just start real basic and just do some math and then we'll keep building on it. So I'm going to go into my repels for my CSC 121 and I'll make a new one. So I'll hit create and I'm going to choose the Python template and I'm going to call it 4A test scores and then put your initial on it. And we'll start that way, and then we'll we'll build up. We might be forking them and having a 4B and 4C, but let's start with that. And I already did these in Python anywhere, so I'm going to kind of redo them and try to introduce some new themes here. So uh, what we're going to do first is just have some variables, and we're going to use something called possible points and earn points. Now, possible points is if you had a test and there were 10 points, and earn points is if you got 9. That's your earn point. So I'm going to put a comment here, and I'll just put, PP equals POS points and EP equals earned points. Just so you know. And then we don't have to make a longer variable when we do that. So we'll do that. And even if we put these on separate lines here. So that's just a note to ourselves, just what we're doing so that we could use short variables. And again, I'll just use the variables right away here. I'll just do uh, possible points equals and I'll just put 10 and I'll use earn points equals, and I'll put nine. So you got nine out of 10, that's a 90%. How do you figure that out? Well, you do math. You could use a calculator, but Python works like a calculator. So you could do this. We could put score first before we print it out. We'll put score equals, we'll make our variable, and then we'll do the math. Now, how do you figure out the score? You do the smaller one divided by the bigger one. So you do the EP, you always take the, the, the bigger one goes into the smaller one. Because if the smaller one went into the bigger one, it would be 1. We'll always do the smaller one divided by the bigger one. So it's always going to be uh, EP divided by, and divided by in Python is just a slash, and it's going to be PP. And then we want to print it out. And I'll just put a comment here, and I'll just put output. And we're just going to print out score. And that's it. And let's see what happens with this. We have 0.9. Now, we want to make that 90%. So what we could do here is multiply that by 100. So we could go in here and just do 100. And that should come out to 90. So now it's 90.0. So right now that's getting our decimal worked out. And we could also do something too. Let me just point this out here that we could use a built-in round function. And if you're wondering where is that built-in round function, there's a whole list uh, when you go to the main page if you scroll down they have python reference and it's a great place to go to see all the built-in functions some of them we've already used string methods we've used that format one the, the dot format one list methods all kinds of things we'll use out of here but built-in functions if you ever find a built-in function and a built-in function is usually one that you're putting something in the parentheses so here's the round function and let me just click on it and just show you how it works and what's nice in w3 schools they have these little try it yourself uh, little work areas and they're showing this one there's the round around the number and it's showing two decimal places so I just want to point out that when you run it and it already is running here uh, it'll it'll round it to two decimal places but it will also use the third place to round it up so this would be 5.77 because that's a 5 if this was a 4 it would stay at 5.76 so it's still using the other one and then rounding it up. So it's always rounding up the last one. So if I did to just one space, it should make it 5.8 because that six should round up the seven. Let's see if that does it. Okay, and if you put zero, what happens if you put in zero? Or so it rounded that one up to the next place. And we can control if we want anything after this or not, but we'll leave this uh, putting a point zero here for now because it's returning it as a float. So it's putting a decimal in there. And then we could always make it an int. We could always do something. We could put int 
around whatever we have if we wanted to, if we didn't want to have a decimal on it. So we could always convert the flow to an int if we wanted to shorten the number. But for grades, we might want a decimal point on there. So anyway, that's the round function. So let's go back and go back into here. And we'll leave a round because there may be grades that have, you know, 77.7 .7 or something and they will determine if it's on the border or not. So we'll leave that in there for now. So we can round this maybe just to one space. Now, obviously a nine out of 10 is not a big deal, but to round it, we just put round uh, in front of it and put the parentheses around everything. And if you want a number of spaces, you could just put a comma and I'll just put one for now. And that should round it to one space. So it should still put 90.0. And if you'd ever want to output it without a zero on there, you can make an int. Now, if you wanted to put parentheses after here, you could basically use an F string. I could put F and then put this inside of here with curly braces, and then I could put a percent sign. And I'd have to make the whole thing a string, right? Except the F. So I'll make this a string, and the F is outside the string, so let's run it. And it says 90%. So let's just put something in here inside the string, like you earned a, and then I'll put a space. You earned a 90%. So we'll do that for now. Okay, you earned a 90%. So we have the percent there. So we could try anything. We could try, you know, 50, and then you got a 46, or 40, let's try 43, an odd number, see what comes up here. Okay, now it's an 86.0, uh, maybe 44, let's see what we get. Okay, so we're doing, we're doing that, so it's giving us nice even numbers here uh, based on 50. Now let's do this as an input. We're doing PP and EP, and we're just kind of putting numbers here, but we wanna be able to input it. So let's put an input in here, and that way we can put in anything we want instead of changing these numbers. So I'm gonna go here and put input and I'll put a prompt so I know what I'm putting in here, and I'll put enter pos points. I'll just shorten it for now, put a capital E here, and then I'll copy the whole thing and put it here, and I'll put enter earned points. And that's our input prompt. Now let's see what happens. What do you think is gonna happen now if we put something in? Let's try it out. Okay, let's say we had uh, 25 possible points, and then you got a 20 we get an error. Why do we get an error from the previous exercise? Remember, we're doing math and inputs actually take the data as strings. So we have to convert that. Now, the easiest thing to do is just put an int right around here. Put int and wrap it around the whole thing. So whatever you put in there, if you know you're gonna be working with numbers, just wrap int around that. And then we could put in 25, enter, and then 20, and now we get an 80% based on that. So that's working okay. Now let's see if we could start to build on this a little bit. Let's say we have four tests, and I'm gonna move this down, and I'm gonna copy this like four times. I'll copy this. And when we do our inputs, bring this back up here, uh, we might want to have space in between each one and each group that we do. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put a backspace N. That's a new line character and I'm going to put it inside there. So I'm going to put backspace N and it should, and actually I only need it, well, I don't even need it here. I just want it here, backspace N, backspace N, backspace N. And Let's see what's going to happen here. Now, we already know this isn't going to do much for us because if we did four different ones, we're basically reassigning this each time. So what I'm saying is, is if you go in here and you put, okay, I got um, 10, that's a discussion thing, and I got nine, and then I got an assignment, there was 25 points, and I got a 23 on it, and then the other one was another uh, quiz, it was 10 points, and I got an eight on it and then finally there's another exercise it was 20 and I got a 20 on it and I'll hit enter so you earned a hundred percent now why did you earn a hundred percent first of all I'll go and put a extra space here I'll put a print 
and I'll make it a, a string and I'll put backspace n just so there's an extra space there uh, the next time we do it. Now, how do we get 100% out of that? We got 9 out of 10, 23. Why is that 100%? Because it's only using the last one because they're, it's being redefined every time. So it's only using the last one and where I got 20 out of 20. So whatever the last one was, that's what it's going to output. So, so this doesn't work here. So what you can do is you could just call this one, one, two, two, you know, for, for each assignment. And again, this isn't real efficient, but we're building up here. So bear with me <laughs> as we go through this. Okay. So now we're doing that. So let's try out this and see how it works. And actually, before I even do it, I see a red line down here. And what do you think that is? It's probably saying undefined. There, undefined, EP and PP, because now I got rid of EP and PP. And now what am I going to do here? Uh, I'd actually have to add these things up first to get a score. Now I'm not looking, I'm looking for a total score. So it could be all these points together. So that means I'd have to do something like this. Do PP and I'll put underscore tote. And then I'll put another one and I'll put EP underscore tote. And that means we'll add them up. That means we'll add up all the PPs and we'll add up all the EPs and then we'll use them here. So then we'll use EP tote, which is total, and PP tote here. Now, we didn't define this yet. So what is PP tote going to be? Well, it's going to be equals, it's going to be PP1 plus PP2 plus PP3 plus PP4. And then this one is going to be EP1 plus EP2. You can see already this isn't really efficient, but we're building up to things here. Okay, so now we're adding all these up here. So we're doing some addition here. So we're getting integers, we're adding them up, and then we're throwing them through here. So again, we're building up a little bit of an algorithm here, but uh, we're not really efficient yet with all these different variables because the more variables you have and the more you have to change, the more chance you're going to screw something up uh, very easily. So let's see what happens here. Let's, let's stop this one that we did, and we'll start over. And again, I'm doing four of them, so I'll do something like 10 and then 9 and then 10, and then 8, and then 10, and then 7, and then 10, and then 6. So it goes 9, 8, 7, 6. So it should give us somewhere in between here. It should give us like a like a 75 or something. It should be in, in between here with these scores. So let's see what happens. And oh, it's a 92.5. It's adding up all the possibles. Is that right? 13, 17 and 13 is 20. It doesn't seem right, does it? <laughs> that you'd have a... Uh, and here's something when you, when you think of errors, you think, I don't know, that just doesn't sound right. EP divided by PP. So we did that. We did the PP totals. So we're putting the larger one into the smaller one. We're dividing the smaller one by the larger one. So that's right, I think. Do you see what I did wrong? <laughs> I have these as PP, EP. So I'm, I have too many points in there. But that's one of those errors that's like a logic error because you're looking at it and you're, and you're like, that's, it. that's not right. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, that's why I'm starting with a value like this because it's so easy to screw up something. And, and if you're not paying attention, you got an error and you're like, wait a minute, 92.5, you got a six and seven, you know, uh, and, and there's no error that came here that, that told me what was wrong, uh, except I just knew it wasn't right because it doesn't seem like it could be a 92.5, and it's because I had something here. So again, that's one of those errors that's kind of on you that you, that you have to figure out. So I'm, I didn't mean to show you that, but there it is. So let's run this again, and I'll do the same thing. 10, 9, 10, 8, 10, 7, 10, Six. And it also introduces the idea of doing something simple so that you know it's working. Like, don't put a whole bunch of random numbers in here because you don't know if it's right. You wouldn't know. I wouldn't have known that I had an error there other than I figured it was going to be like 85 or something. So there, or 75, I should say. So it should be, should have been right in between there. So that's correct. So I have these right now. So that's working okay. And now if I keep adding more, I, if I add one more, I have to go here and do PP5. And then I have to change this. 
and then I have to change this, and then I have to add a plus PP5 here, and then I have to do a plus PP5 or EP. See, I'm already making mistakes. <laughs> so I'm doing EP5 there. So uh, now if we do one more, it's going to work like that. So uh, I, I'll do one more, and then I'll stop here, and then we'll keep building on this, and that'll be the end of our 4A. And then we'll work on 4B, which will be kind of taking this and building on it more. So let's just do this quick. 10, 9, 10, 8, 10, 7, 10, 6, 10, 5. Okay, so we have 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So it should be, actually it should be 7. We should have a 70 when we do this, I'm guessing, just because we have 5 and that's the middle value right there. So let's see what happens. And that's right. So I, I'm using something simple and I'm uh, assuming what it's going to be and it's coming out to that. So that's working. Although, is it efficient? No, because we're making all these variables here. We have to add new variables here and it's just not very efficient and they're not identified well. We're just randomly putting in points. We don't know what's right. So we're going to build on this in our next exercise. So this is 4A. Everything will be under 4, so we may have a couple repels in here, but our next one is going to be 4B. So we're going to kind of take this and fork it and then build up on it for 4B and try to do something a little more efficient so that we don't have to keep adding things here. Maybe we could use a counter or something so that we could just keep adding to it. And so we, and we could also identify our tests a little bit better, but that's what we'll be doing next. So that'll be in part two.